There are a ton of Five Nights at Freddy's books, and even more coming with how big this franchise has gotten. Now, these have all been confirmed to be canon, and if you want more detail, ID's Fantasy made an entire video about that, so I highly recommend you check it out if you still have questions. This can be so much for a theorist, just so many different themes from all the novels to keep in mind. And that's where I'm going to be coming from. I'm going to explain in today's video all of the Fazbear Frights book. None of the other ones, because, let's face it, we don't have all the time in the world here. I need to get this video out soon. But, if you like it, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, and who knows, I might go back and do them. With all that being said, let's get started. <laughs> I forgot to mention this, but I'm only doing the main story from each of these books. Not the other two, because they come in packs of three. The first story, for today's video, is Into the Pit, which actually recently got its own game. The main character of this story is Oswald. He gets mad at his dad for always dropping him off at a creepy pizzeria all day while he goes to work, and decides to hide in a ball pit. The ball pit seemingly sends him back in time to when the MCI incident happened, and he gets chased by William Afton. Oswald escapes out of the ball pit back into present day, leaving William Afton behind. His father is mad at him for hiding, and then William Afton jumps out and drags his father into the ball pit. Oswald reaches out and grabs him back out the ball pit, but he seems to have taken on the Yellow Rabbit's form. Oswald goes back into the pit and saves his father, and together they both leave. But of course, William Afton isn't going to let it slide that easy, and climbs out of the ball pit with them, only to get caught on the ball pit's little hangy net things, and hangs himself, just like Tarzan. Wonderful. Fazbear Frights number two. Fetch. A child breaks into Freddy's with a few of his friends, and when they raid the prize counter, they find this animatronic dog and decide, hey, why don't we just take this home? What horrible things could happen to us? Then he realizes that the dog can fetch whatever he asks of him whether it was intentional or not, and is looking through his search history and everything else on his phone. The dog then proceeds to go rip off his owner's uncle's thumb and put it on the front porch for him. Beautiful. And then, oh yeah, he kills his girlfriend, and that's the end of the story. Fast Bear Frights, number 3, 1.35 a.m. Fun fact about this, in case you didn't know, the main antagonist of this book is Ella, and she actually appeared in the movie kind of as an easter egg, and is a major plot point in the Silver Eyes trilogy. Just thought I'd mention that. Back on to the main story, Delia is kind of going through it. She's been hitting hard times, and her sleep schedule's not very great, so what does she do? She buys a random creepy doll at a yard sale, as one does. The doll doesn't wake her up on time, and she ends up throwing it out. Then it beeps at 1.35, no matter where she is, and it drives her insane as she tries to get away with it, but never can. Eventually, she ends up just accidentally killing herself from trying to get away from the doll. Very few of these stories have good endings, forgot to mention that. Fazbear Frights number 4, Step Closer. A kid bullies his younger brother and takes him to the Foxy animatronic because he knows he hates it and it'll scare the crud out of him. But then the animatronic starts to malfunction and sings a sea shanty about losing a eye and an arm. Correction, it's not actually a sea shanty. Then a flying buzzsaw almost chops off his arm and a fishing pole nabs his eyeball. 
Lots of other stuff is just so close to hurting him, including a dart, that he understands it must be a curse at this point. As he runs over to face Foxy and break the curse once and for all and finally be free, he isn't paying attention where he's going and he gets hit by a bus. And then the doctor saw off his arm and take his eyeball to donate it. Good charity. Fazbear Frights number 5, Bunny Call, which is actually based off of a real life experience Scott Cawthon had. A father is forced to go on vacation with his family, and after super long and stressful work hours, all he wants to do is just sit back and relax. Who can blame him? His kids are all young and energetic and really want him to do everything with them. So he can't rest at all and he gets super annoyed. Then he hears about something called the bunny cow. <laughs> cow. The bunny call that the workers do where somebody dresses up as a bunny, goes to your cabin, and makes a ton of noise scaring everybody in your cabin. Sort of revenge for fathers. But that night, his heart is filled with guilt and regret because he knows his family will hate him for the mean act he did of hiring a bunny to scare the crud out of his kids. So he regrets it and tries to call it off, but the bunny doesn't listen and tries to just forcefully break into the cabin anyway, and he has to defend until 6am. After the rabbit was gone, they lived happily ever after. Fazbear Frights number 6, Blackbird. Two dudes are together, and the first dude reveals that as a child, he used to bully another kid. Now, he takes this as something normal, no biggie, but the other child was a victim of abuse in elementary school and is enraged by this. Then his friend just gets hit by a train, or something like that. And the main character starts seeing this mysterious, horrifying creature that him and his friend was working on for a school project called the Blackbird. And one night the Blackbird stands on top of him like a sleep paralysis demon and cuts off his breath. So he goes back to the person he used to bully and apologizes. And she's all grown up now. Then his friend magically reappears and everything is fine again. Fazbear Frights number 7, The Clips. Now for this one I'm going to try to keep it more on the 13 plus side because the story is a little dark. A man is troubled with his only son because his wife recently passed away, so things are pretty hard. And he buys his son a plush Freddy doll. One day whenever he goes out to check on his son, all is left is the Freddy doll and his son mysteriously disappears with a white van. The Freddy doll then continually tells him on his phone to go to McDonald's, that's definitely what the book says. And after a very long time, the father resolves to go to McDonald's, but if he's going down, he's going to take the Frey doll with him. Just as he's about to order, his, he hears his son crying from, I don't know, probably the play place of death, and he goes and rescues him, leaving the doll behind at McDonald's, and they live happily ever after, leaving that cursed thing to just rot there. Fazbear Frights number 9, Gumdrop Angel. A teenage girl is super annoyed at how much attention her little sister is getting for her birthday at Fazbear's. And Fazbear's likes to give them gumdrop noses for no special reason at all. This is just so weird. So they give her little sister the gumdrop nose. Out of jealousy for her sister, she eats the gumdrop nose because she knows it will upset her. Then she starts to feel a little weird and calls one of the employees she met at Fazbear's. She goes over there quickly and he tells her to lay inside of a box and everything will be fine. 
Then she wakes up as the gumdrop angel and can't move and watches as all the little kids devour her insides. Fazbear Frights number 9. The Puppet Carver. My personal favorite. For this story, the main character is pretty much Ebenezer Scrooge, and in case somehow you don't know who he is, he's a absolute jerk to his employees who are trying to be nice to him and just working their hardest, but he's still a jerk to everybody. He goes to the machine that one of his employees made that would make animatronics purely out of wood and accidentally gets stuck in it. He starts to smell something burning, but then quickly is released from the machine. After that, he's a changed man. He has a new appreciation of life and he's super nice to his employees, which they take notice of. Then he gets attacked by a pile of rotten flesh the night before which is just so weird and then it gets revealed that he's actually one of the puppets that the puppet machine made and that's why he's so nice and the real Ebenezer Scrooge is a dead corpse stuck inside. Fast Bear Frights number 10, Friendly Face or the specific story Sea Bunnies which I'm actually going to let Dalko explain for you. I go into my bedroom and I look inside my fish tank Oh no, what has happened? My sea monkeys have turned into rabbit heads And they're blue and they smell And they're looking at me very evilly I'm going to go to the bathroom and tip them in the toilet Oh no, I'm thirsty, I take a drink And now they're inside my belly And now I'm dead Fast Pair Frights number 11, Prankster. A man is just going to his average everyday job at the office when a mysterious man is over the radio telling him that if he doesn't hurry up, his friends won't have very many pieces left of them. So he runs around the office doing tasks and finds a bunch of grotesque, disgusting things like fingers and eyeballs in the drawers that is just so descriptive. Oh, thank you so much, Scott. And at the end, he discovers that his friends are totally mutilated. Fast Bear Frights number 12, Felix the Shark. A man is convinced that the Frey Fast Bears he went to had a animatronic shark that you could swim with. So he decides to prove his friends wrong on a cross-country road trip to figure out where it is, and all of the locals are completely unhelpful and seem very troubled that he would go looking after such a creepy shark. He finally finds Felix and swims around with him, and then he discovers that the air tank, well, it doesn't exactly work and he's stuck with the shark. And um, he's dead. <laughs>